Hello and welcome to Plumbing Solutions Educational Series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about what I call the cordless drill kit. Now, you don't really hear that name cordless drill a whole lot anymore. Um, a lot of the guys around here just call it a battery kit or a battery drill or a battery saw. Um, but for me, I kind of grew up with this stuff. I kind of evolved right along with it. And the first cordless tool I remember was the electric screwdriver. Uh, now this thing was kind of bulky, it had a button for forward and reverse on it, it had an onboard battery, and then it had a wall charger and you'd plug it into the end of it. I remember one that we had had a mount that was on the wall and you snapped it into it and it would start charging it then. Uh, but these things didn't have a whole lot of power. Uh, they were good for like putting toys together, but you weren't going to be doing anything serious with it. And from what I remember, those things set on charge longer than they were ever used. Um, after that, you see the arrival of the first true cordless drill uh, with a battery pack. Um, and here again, they didn't have a whole lot of power, it was very low voltage, uh, the battery spent more time charging than they were actually getting used, but with that cordless drill you could put a screwdriver bit in it, you could put um, small drill bits and things, but you weren't going to be doing anything serious with it. If you needed to do something serious and really drive a bit or a saw blade or something, you were going to pull out your corded stuff and run a drop cord. Um, but this is what we have today. This is a DeWalt set. This just so happens to be the 20 volt uh, lithium ion brushless kit. Now a lot of people don't know what the brushless part means but when it comes to electric motors all of the older style ones had these little contact points. They were called brushes but they're just kind of little blocks of uh, metal looking stuff and they touch that spinning armature in there and over time those little blocks wear down to nothing and then they fall out and then the tools no good anymore um, alternators and starters and cars have little brushes in them and back in my day we used to take those alternators when the alternator would go bad we'd take it apart we'd put new brushes in it put it back together put it back on the vehicle well you don't really do that anymore you go get a remanufactured one and somebody does that in a shop uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing how long these guys last, being the fact that they are brushes, brushless, which means there's no contacting parts in here. It's all magnetic field going on. Uh, so I am, I am looking forward to seeing how long these guys last. This kit is brand new. Um, now, when you get a kit like this, the first thing you're going to notice is it comes with a big bag. Uh, I prefer the hard cases, uh, but to keep costs down, they, they went for a bag. Most of the kits where you get a couple tools and the charger and stuff, uh, they come with something to put it in. I highly recommend you use your bag. You take all these tools at the end of the day, take the bits and the blades and stuff out of the end of them and put them back in the bag. There's some pockets in here for your batteries and for your charger. Uh, another thing with this, and this is from experience, don't put anything in here other than these. Don't put any liquids or anything in there. Uh, I remember when I first got into construction, we had these job site radios, and they were these giant radios with big old batteries on them, and that was so we could talk to each other across the job site. And we had these little electrician's bags, similar to this, a little smaller, uh, to put our big charger in, and those two big batteries, and that radio, and uh, one of the guys that I work with, he put a bottle of suntan lotion in there. And yeah, in the summer heat, that suntan lotion exploded and it destroyed the charger, the batteries, the radio, everything. And I remember my boss was very mad because those things were pretty expensive, you know, 20 something years ago. Uh, so don't put anything in the bag with your tools. Don't put glue in there. Don't, don't put anything in there other than the tool itself. And you know, your drill bits and things would be fine. Um, all right, moving on from there, if you get the whole kit, you're going to get a charger. They're pretty simple. They're really small now. They're not as big and bulky. Um, don't leave this hooked up to a saw pole. Always remember where your charger is. Uh, me, I can kind of charge my stuff you know, here in the office or whatever, and I'm not out there in the field charging it. If you have the option to do that, go for it. Uh, because
because I have left these at saw poles. Luckily, it was still there when I came back. Uh, but most of them are going to come, most of your kits are going to come with at least one battery. Um, I recommend getting at least two. Uh, now you can buy the individual tools that doesn't come with a battery and it doesn't come with a charger. It's just the tool and they do that to try to keep uh, the cost down on these things. Uh, neat thing about these new batteries is they've got a power level indicator on it. Uh, and I think that's great. So when you pull the tool out of the bag before you walk way over there and do whatever you're going to do, you, you know you've got a decent battery. Um, but yeah, try to keep your batteries charged, keep them clean. Uh, just take care of your stuff. All right, now in the kit, the most widely used thing uh, that we have in plumbing is going to be your reciprocating saw. And this is DeWalt's new design. I really, really like this. What they did was the motor used to be up here. It was about that much longer because they had to put the handle on the end of it. They turned it at a 45 degree angle, which makes it really compact uh, and really lightweight. Um, I, I've really enjoyed this guy. I've used it a few times, but it's pretty simple, pretty basic. It's got a trigger on it, remember. Uh, there is a lock here. I recommend uh, taking the battery off, but if you're not going to do that, lock that thing down when you put it in that bag because you don't want that to get caught on something and just be jumping around. Uh, but it's pretty simple. Uh, this one is really neat because it's got uh, two different chucks here. It's got your basic one, which in, in order to use your chuck, you lift up on this little tab. All your reciprocating saws pretty much the same way nowadays. Uh, and then you can mount that in its chuck, lock that thing down, and it's pretty much there. And then, of course, you can flip it over uh, for whatever other job you're doing. And now, this is the neat thing that this is the first time I've really seen this. Uh, it's got a chuck at the top, which you can put it in there flat like that. And of course, you can do it uh, both ways. Um, I'm, Never, never had this before. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what I could possibly cut sideways like that. But, but it is neat. It is neat. I, I like it a lot. But that's what you're going to use in plumbing a bunch. Uh, and with the improvements on these batteries, you're going to get a lot out of this saw. Now, the cordless drill itself, and this is what really started it, was the drill. Uh, we don't really use the drill that much anymore um, because we're not really using this for a screwdriver. We have another tool to do that. Um, and we're not really drilling a whole lot of holes, um, but we still need to have one of these and some good bits, some good paddle bits. Of course, uh, a lot of our stuff is, is the bigger saws and those are still corded right now. They, they haven't come up with the technology to get those in a battery kit. Um, but it's pretty simple design. This is a keyless chuck. Uh, it's a three-prong keyless chuck that you can do with your hand. Um, and batteries go on like such. Uh, but you can put your bit, and I've got an inside pipe cutter here. Uh, put it in like that. Kind of hold that thing lightly. Put it in forward and let it spin. And there you go. You're ready to roll. And then, of course, to unchuck it just like that. Uh, be careful with these things. Go slow. Um, get to know your drill before you get too carried away. Uh, I love the fact that they give you a, a light on the front of these things nowadays. Um, but the drills still have the two speeds. They've got a one and a two. And then a lot of people don't really know about the torque setting here. If this does have a torque setting, then if you crank it all the way down, uh, this is for driving screws, but we don't really drive screws with the drill anymore. But if you put it on one, what that does is if you're screwing in, it'll hit a certain point and it'll start click, 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 which won't drive any farther. And I can simulate that by holding this. You see that? Now, if I crank it all up to 11 or 12, it's going gonna, it's gonna to resist a little bit more. And then, of course, there's the main drill function, which is pretty much what you're going to do with it. <clears throat> now, these batteries have a lock on them with a button, so when you're changing in and out of the tools, you're going to push that little button. Uh, the next thing you're going to have, and pretty much all the kits have these main three tools, is your impact screwdriver. Uh, now, 
The electricians love these guys. They carry these around in their belts all the time because they're doing all those little light sockets and stuff like that. These things are great uh, when you're mounting a tankless water heater um, because you can put like a little bit with socket in here and you can use a socket, you can use a screwdriver. Um, it does have a little lock here. Uh, this this fitting doesn't have it, but some of them have a little groove and you can actually lock that fitting in. Um, if you can find an inside pipe cutter that has that special fitting um, on the end of it, I recommend going ahead and getting that one uh, because a lot of times this drill will let go of this thing and it'll go down the pipe if you're not careful. Um, but we use these a lot if you're anchoring in concrete, like for a tankless water heater. Um, lots of different things, but one thing I'm going to tell you, do not do. These guys. A finished product. These shower trim plates have screws on them. These great big old long screws, and they have a finish. They're, they're oil rub bronze, they're satin nickel, chrome, whatever. I cannot stand it when I have to go behind somebody and there's a screw that's all tore up because they ran it in with their impact uh, instead of just the old fashioned screwdriver. Anytime you're dealing with a finished product, take care of that finish. I know this is going to take forever. Use your screwdriver on this finished stuff. Okay for mounting the tankless water heater, okay for uh, anchoring a hose bib. Uh, something like that perfectly fine to use your impact on but not these guys because that thing when it goes to t -t 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 -t, it's going to tear that head of that screw up or if you've got it cross threaded um it, it's going to be a mess these screws are hard to find a lot of times i'd have to just go get the whole valve trim take the screws out of it, throw the valve trim away and i hated doing that absolutely hated doing that impact is not for finished product uh don't use your impact on a tankless water heater cover or your pipe cover underneath that. That stuff is very, very thin metal and it's only got like one or two threads in that metal part. And the first time you go, you're gonna strip that thing out. And, and then the cover's gonna fall off, you're gonna lose the screws. I've seen them so many times where there's only one screw holding the thing on and it's flapping around in the wind. Now most of the time it's not us that does that. Most of the time it's when the electricians come behind us to wire them up, they use their impacts, they tear those things up, but it's our problem and we've got to figure out how to fix it. Most of the time, a bigger screw, but then that looks like crap. Anyway, moving on, uh, most of these kits are going to come with something special. Uh, I've seen them that with radios, I've seen that they've got some fans out there now, but they're going to give you an extra little treat and most of them come with a little flashlight. Now, these are really simple flashlights. Um, it is LED. Uh, I really enjoy these flashlights because it uses your drill battery. Uh, it lasts a long time. Um, and the fact that it's LED, it's really bright and I haven't had any burn up on me. Uh, DeWalt used to make an old one that actually had a incandescent bulb in there um, and those bulbs would burn out. But the ones that I use like this, the ones I've had for a while, I still have them and they'll probably outlast those batteries. But that's basically it. Um, something I should have touched on earlier, but I still need to say something about it. Safety glasses. Anytime you're cutting, anytime you're boring, anytime you're drilling, anytime you're trip, uh, chipping, uh, grinding, anything like that, anytime there is a hazard, wear your safety glasses. Um, I, I've gone to the ER twice since I became a plumber because I had something stuck in my eye and going to the ER cost about $800. So don't do it. Uh, wear your safety glasses, take care of yourself. Uh, wear your gloves, wear your hard hats in hard hat locations, um, and at the end of the day, keep your tools clean, put them back in the bag, zip the bag up, don't put anything else in here that's not supposed to go in there. All right, I, I hope that's a good introduction on uh, how your cordless drill works.